our hands and give him praise. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody say.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our second session on the subject that I will be doing for a little while, and I entitled it The Heavenly Antique Roadshow, and that there are things that are sacred. There are things that are so sacred to God and he want us to keep those things in remembrance because they become power. They become heavenly security to us who are in the kingdom of Almighty God. Uh, last week, we looked at the first session, and it was the Father. The Father, the Father. Now, the section that we were using for, was from John's Gospel, and we will be there. And the section that drew my attention was in John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. And John wrote this as he began to give the reason why he was ordered by the Lord to print this gospel. And this is very interesting to me because he says, there are also many other signs and wonders which Jesus performed in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. And then he says, but these are written in order that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God, and that through believing and cleaving to and trusting and relying upon him, you may have life in his name. Amen and amen. These signs, and in John's gospel, there are seven of them. And these seven signs leaves a message. It leaves something that is so valuable. It is antique. It has been there for a while. But yet, if we lose sight of it, we miss out on a whole lot in life. And last week, I brought about this great truth about the Father about the Father. And we looked at where Jesus says, our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. And we spent some time understanding how so important the Father is because all things begin with the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus wanted us to know that I would be talk about the Father and the reason why that drew my attention was that something told me, he says, do a research on Father, on Father. And as I shared last week, after counting, John used that word over a hundred times in his gospel. That drew my attention that the Father, the Father is sacred antique that goes way back. And we are not to lose sight of that because he is the beginning of everything. And Father, Father, we have so many individuals who don't realize that we are fatherless. We lost that in the Garden of Eden. It means a lot to me to know that Father. Father, and every time I say that now, it has different meaning to me because it takes me way back and there is nothing more holy and more sacred and more valuable to the human race than realizing the origin of us, the beginning of us, standing with the Father and realize that there is a Father of this world who hates us 
and will do everything he can to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came, and the Father sent him to defeat him, but to revive and get us to see the value of the Father. Today, I want to start another sacred treasure that goes way back of many years. And it's in John chapter 2. John chapter 2. And in that, and I want to read from verses 1 down to verse 11. And it reads this way. In the third day, there was a marriage at Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus was invited with his disciples to the marriage. And when the wine was all gone, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no more wine. Jesus said to her, dear woman, what is it that to you and to me, what do we have in common? Leave it to me, my time has not yet come. His mother says to the servants, whatever he say to you, do it. Now there were six water pots of stone standing there as the Jewish customs of purification, ceremonial washing demanded holding 20 to 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. When, then he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the manager of the feast, to the one presiding, the superintendent of the banquet. So they took him some. And when the manager tasted the water, just now turned into wine, not knowing where it came from, though the servants who drew, who had drawn the water knew, he called to the bridegroom and said to him, everyone else serves his best wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then he served that which is not so good but you have kept back the good wine until now. And this statement, now this, the first of the signs, miracles wonder work Jesus performed in Canaan of Galilee and manifested his glory. By it, he displayed his greatness and his power openly and his disciples believed in him, adhered to, trusted in, and reached and relied on him. Oh, now, boy, this is something sacred here. This is something, this is some antique. This is something that is so sacred that we have lost sight of it. And the sign here is this. Jesus the Father's answer to my disappointment. And I kept saying that to myself, and may you say that. Jesus, God answers to my appointment. Before I get started, let us have a chance to pray, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for those that you have brought who are now tuned in, who are listening. But more than that, Lord, I just pray that the truth and the sign, the message of this message will enter into the hearts and the lives of those who are listening here today. I pray right now, oh, Lord God, this is such an important truth. And, Lord, because it has been lost and the enemy has blinded our minds to it, and to now we are suffering many, many things into this nation and throughout this world, oh, Lord God, 
Thank you for your presence here today. Oh, blessed Holy Spirit, I, we pray right now that you will use the truth of the sacred treasure. And oh, Lord God, speak to the hearts of those who are here today. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. And I now speak and declare Jesus, Lord, over this service. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, after reading that, listen to this very please. Listen to the statement. Jesus, the Father's answer to my disappointments. But the setback was a marriage, a marriage feast. And Jesus was invited. It was very interesting to me because I was listening, I was thinking about some things. I heard a brother of mine, pastor, who I listened to quite a bit. And one time he was talking about this here, and then his question was this. How many marriages is Jesus invited to? How many is he invited to? Jesus was invited to this one. And right away, I want to bring something that, please listen to me carefully now. Jesus attended a marriage. Now, I need you to listen to me very carefully because something has replaced this secret treasury. And God wants us to know, listen carefully, is that marriage is more important than a wedding. Marriage is more important than a wedding. Number two, Joy, and we're going to see that in the wine, is more important than happiness. And then number three, happiness, the first wine, will run out. Now that was something that God dealt with. Of course, my wife and I, we've been called to marriage ministry. Marriage ministry. And it's through this Testings and times in life, God has helped me to understand the truth of this. Oh, Lord God, please speak today. Now we live in a world to where the wedding is more important than the marriage. And I like to give this testimony sometimes of individuals when they come to me when I used to do marriages. They would come, and they want to talk about it, talk about the, uh, what they want to talk about most is the wedding. And I can remember one time a couple was here, and the goal was, or the idea was, we want to talk about the wedding and get things involved with the wedding and make sure the wedding go right. And they didn't realize that. But after a certain period of time, I said, no. My agenda was, let's talk about the marriage. Listen to me. Let's talk about the marriage. And everybody looks kind of weird. What are you talking about? Aren't they the same? No. No. Let's talk about the marriage. And then, this is okay, what are you talking about? And then I start to share with them about the marriage. Hmm? I said, why do you want to spend so much time with me and talking about something, the wedding? Ah, talking about the first wine that's going to last oh, for, for a few hours and ignore the marriage who could last for 40, 50 years. What? 
Oh, yes. The marriage is what's so important. Let's get this straight now. And I said, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. Okay. See, please don't go around and tell people, Pastor Jones performed our, my wedding. No, I don't. Mm -mm. Let's get this straight before we get started. I said, what? And let me understand something else. Pastor Jones can't do a marriage. I can't do that. Huh? Go back to the old antique show, back to Genesis. And you're going to confine that the first marriage was performed by God. I said, hmm. I said, okay, now let's get this marriage thing straight here now. So that we can make sure you prepared for it. I said, when you come down and stand before me, okay, let's get the marriage down, okay? You're going to make some vows, okay? In the marriage, you are making those vows to the Father. Everything you say, don't think you're just making those to the person next to you, okay? See, because it takes God to make you one. And when you make those vows, you are making those vows to the Father first, and then to the person on the other side. I says, bride, when you come down, and you stand, you're not standing before me. You're standing before God the Father. Oh, man, you ought to see the looks on their faces. But thank God some of those who have went through this counseling understand this now. And I said, let's get this straight now. And I said, you're going to stand before God. And I said, when you make them vows, you are making them primarily to the Father. And then, listen to this, I can't make you man and wife. But when you have made those vows to the Father, then the Father says, I now declare you husband and wife. This is one of the first steps of dealing with with that wine that was there. God want us to understand that it is Jesus who's going to perform that marriage. In this one, he was there. And I try to get everyone who I do one with to understand I'm not God. There are certain things that are too sacred for me to deal with. Marriage is something so sacred to God until he still performs them. He still performs them. The wine ran out. I said, oh, and by the way, I'm going to tell you something to let you know what I'm saying was true. Okay, is that all this happiness you got right now and all that happens that day that you call love is going to run out. In this one, it ran out. And then God said to Jesus, they've run out of wine. Oh, my Lord. Boy, that's something me and my wife generally tell individuals when they come there and we have a hot bottle of water. And when they come to this, well, I really want you to understand this marriage thing. Because, see, when you come there without you not realizing it, you come there with the wine that's going to run out. 
and we give them a tea bag. The husband to be have a tea bag and the wife to be has a tea bag and some hot water. I said, now I want you to understand something, okay? That wine, that earthly stuff that you're bringing is going to run out. They said, what? I said, oh, let me know you when it's run out. I say, see the hot water? Put those tea bags in that hot water. And both put them in there. And then guess what started happening? That water started turning dark. And all the stuff that's in the bag started getting into the water. Ah, just Jesus' way of saying the wine has run out. All the happiness is gone. You got to know what to do. And I tell you what, praise God. They looked at that for a while, and sometimes it's hard to believe. But old oh man, some weeks later, the phone rang. And they're saying, Thank you, Pastor. Well, that they says, What you said is coming true. He said, What? I need that wine that Jesus got. <laughs> he says, That dirty water is showing itself right now. And only, listen, only Jesus can clear it up. Only the Son of God can clear that water up. So now listen to this, please, since I move along. There were six water pots there. Now, please listen to me now. There were six water pots. Let me read you something about those water pots, please. Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. Now that gathered together to Jesus the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, for they had seen that some of his disciples ate with common hands, that is, unwashed, with hands that is defiled and unhallowed, because they had not given them a ceremonial washing. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are many other traditions, oral, man-made law handed down to them, which they observe faithfully and diligently, such as the washing of cups and wooden pitchers and wide-mouthed jugs and utensils of copper and earth. And the Pharisees and scribes kept asking Jesus, why do your disciples not order their way of living according to the tradition handed down by the forefather to observe, but eat with hands unwashed, ceremonially not purified? But he said to them, excellently and truly, So that there was no room to blame, did Isaiah prophesy of you, the pretenders and the hypocrites, as it stands written, these people consistently honor me with their lips, but their hearts hold off and are a distance from me. Oh, now. Oh, now. The water parts, and that's important because in this, the water part represents man. It represents the human race without God. And what Mark, what, and what they were talking about was that these individuals would go through a religious process. And they would do a whole lot of things, but it wasn't doing any good. And then they came to Jesus and said, well, why aren't you doing it? And Jesus said, I didn't come for that. I come to set you free from that. I am the only solution to this. And Jesus told them, go fill the pots 
with water. Now, listen to me, Kevin. Now, in a sense, what does these water pots tend to mean? For me, is that a wedding is more important than a marriage. Oh, Lord God, help me here today. Please, they are not the same. They are not the same. Their marriage is the most important thing. I'm going to say that again. The marriage is the most important thing, and I hope that truth sits inside of you. It is Jesus who does it. And Jesus said, I come to do away with it, that you may have life. Now, Jesus told them to fill the pots. And I looked at that, and I looked at that, and I said, Lord, what are you trying to say for that? And the word came, he says, filling the water pot simply means I have come to totally do away with religion. And especially I come to do away with religion in the marriage. Religion has made a wedding more sacred than the marriage. But yet, without this truth, what we bring into it, human, the water pots, it's not going to work. So they fill them up to the brim. And Jesus said, I come to deal with all of it. Every jot and tittle of it, I came to deal with it. And then he says, take some wine to the master of ceremony. And they did. And when the master of ceremony heard it, it's when he made that statement. He says, everyone else served their best wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then he served that which is not so good. But you have kept back the good wine until now. Oh, boy. Listen, when we get hold of this, when that dirty water started coming out, as these couples have seen, Oh, man, that first wine is running out. That which looks so good is no longer any good anymore. And Jesus said, the water pots are full. I have come to, deal, to do away with all that water pot stuff. I've come to deal with all that first wine. And then he told them, to give it to him, and he said that. And for a long time, I sat there with it, and I sat there with it, and I said, Lord, something you want me to see that I'm not seeing. And just naturally sitting there, I thought that they got the water out of the water pots. Oh, no, 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 God said, you didn't get it out of the water pot. They got it out of the well that they got the water from to put in the water pot. The wine was coming out of the well. God is saying, in Jesus, only here is that well that won't run dry. In him is life. In him is the solution to make marriage what I created it to be. Oh, Lord, my saints. He did that. And Jesus said, this was, the Bible said, that was the first sign he did. Why? Because I want you to understand how important this is. Because we have lost this sacred treasure Marriage is unimportant. 
because we have lost this sacred treasure? Same-sex marriage has come on the scene. Because we have lost this sacred truth, there are people who are males believe they are females, and people who are females believe that they are males. But thank God, can't bother me because when we lay this truth down, many marriages that could have ended in divorce is still going on. And oh Lord God, thank God for those who want to tap into that living well of life Jesus, what he puts together in him is the power for it to be, make, it, make its full maturity. Oh, Lord, my God. And that's why it becomes so true in regard to how unhappy you are. And you may want to get out of the marriage. Please, his power. Here's what's sacred. You didn't make the vow predominantly to your spouse. You made the vow to God the Father. And it was he that made you one. Don't make the wedding Take the place of the marriage. Thank God for the number ones who have heard this truth. And I thank God they're still together. But not only that, there's some greater work to be realized. Marriage is more sacred than a wedding. Oh, Lord God, may more of this truth, this sacred treasure, be realized in the hearts and the minds, especially of those who are listening today, for, Lord, we can carry this message to others. Let us bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, just pray for your forgiveness, O oh Lord. Well, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the truth you've given me and my wife. But, O oh Lord, we're looking for you to make this truth more alive and more vivid. Thank you, Lord, for those who you, who you have used us to minister to. And, O oh Lord God, the marriage became more important than the wedding. The marriage is for life. The wedding is just for a few hours. It is you who make the two one. It is to you the vows are made. Lord, may this truth set in. And Lord, right now today, I don't know how many right now who this parts, these six parts of water, oh Lord God, it's over with. Lord, may they see that it is the marriage that are most important. And with God's help, we need to get prepared for it. Oh, Lord God, help us to see that. And oh, Lord God, maybe there are many who are already married. Now, the first stage is for those who may be planning on it. Please, it is the marriage. And please, remember, no judge, no man makes you two one, but it is the Father who makes 
a two one. And then I want to speak to those, Lord, who are in marriage and have been it for a while, but they did not know this secret. And you have said something here today. And, oh, Father, I pray right now that they will say, Father, thank you for this truth. May they say it right now. Father, thank me for this truth. Thank you for this light that is shown to us this day. And, oh, Lord, that well with living water, living wine that you gave to the overseer of that marriage, oh, God, may that wine become in our marriage. And, oh, Lord God, we can be the experience, the sacredness of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And, Lord, if there's any here be today, Lord, who don't know you as the Father. Oh, Lord God, today, how many here today are fatherless and don't even know it? Please listen to me. The goal of the prayer is not to go to heaven, but the, pro of the, go the, the goal of the prayer is for each and every one to realize we are fatherless and we need a father. And the father sent the son, Jesus, here to make that truth known to us that we are fatherless and that we will humble ourselves and say, Heavenly Father, say this, repeat after me if, if that's you today. I see today that I'm fatherless. It's not by going to heaven, but it is the reestablishing of a relationship that was lost in the Garden of Eden. Right now, thank you for your love that has been shared in Jesus Christ. Lord, I sense the need of that love. I sense the need of you being my father. And I'm asking you to send Jesus. I accept your solution, Jesus Christ. I ask him to come into my life that that lost relationship can be established here this day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I trust that today's message open your eyes to some truth. And may God take the truth. It's going to take some time. But to be a light into your hearts and your lives. And more than that, but we can be a living testimony to this world around us. Thank you and God bless you all. Trust that the message really inspired you. And now we want to have the communion service at this time. And I trust that what I'm going to say 
would be a great blessing to all of you who are here. In this Lord's Supper, the passage that I want to bring out that is so meaningful to me was this. He says, Then whosoever shall eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and the blood of Christ. Oh, this much uh, uh, verse is so important to me. He said, but let a man thoroughly examine himself. And only when he has done so, should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And the Lord took some things that he'd been dealing with me with and began to share with me that I really didn't have the skills he wanted me to have or the maturity to examine myself. To examine myself. And during my communion time, I said, Lord, teach me. How do I examine myself? And then the Lord shared with me, he says, I will give you the test. And when you understand this, you can begin to understand what I died for in my blood to scale. Listen to me carefully. And then the Lord says, this is the first step of examining yourself. I said, okay. When it becomes real to you that your problem is not on the outside, your problem is on the inside. And I use the outside to show you the inside that I died for, shed my blood for. Say, what? That's why James says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Jesus said, until this truth dwells in you, that the outside is not the problem. I use the outside to show you the problem. And when you start looking at the problem that the outside is showing you, then you are in the process of examining yourself. But until this truth becomes real to you, you're going to go around examining the outside and talking about the outside and condemning the outside. And you never have the communion that I paid the price for. So now, I thank God that the truth of how he sets up things for me to examine myself so I can begin to see within myself the things that he died for and shed his blood for. Amen. And I trust that what be said will become a living reality in your life. The outside is not your problem. We have to learn that truth even in marriage. We believe that the spouse is the problem, and God says, no, the spouse is not the problem. I use the problem to show you your problem. See, that's what happened at War Room. And this lady was saying, well, I'm not saying he's perfect, but God has got to use somebody to show somebody the problem so that I can fix it, so that I can fix the marriage. I thank God for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, may this statement ministers to many today who does not understand this great concept of learning yourself so that we can take the bread and drink the cup. Because then we will begin to confess the sin that you've showed us 
and cleansing in the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, Heavenly Father, those who are listening here today, may this truth shine in them. That they may be free, Lord. Because if we don't deal with the inside problem that you've shown us, we come down with cancer, we come down with cardiovascular disease, we come down with all kinds of sickness and disease that could be eliminated if we understand this great truth. If we understand this great truth. And that's why the Bible says if you don't do this, we can be dying earlier than it was planned for us. So, Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, may this message of how to examine myself speak to those who are listening here today. And, oh, Lord, may this truth set in. My problem is not the outside. My problem is on the inside. Jesus died for the inside problems. Oh, Lord God, make that truth real. And amen. And so right now, I want to come before you right now and to thank God for this great truth. And I pray that it become real to you. And today, I'm just publicly doing what the Lord has been doing to me in my communion time with him. Oh, Lord God, bless this time in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And oh, Lord God, I just want to thank you right now that how you've shown that the outside problem only reveal what you died for in your body, in your death what you died for. Thank you, Lord God, right today of this great truth. And I proclaim this truth today. And may many others, Lord, begin to happen. And Lord, as I take this now, oh God, may this truth, this bread become real in life for those who are hearing it today. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. And then in the same manner, he took that cup and he said, this cup represents my blood that was shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And Father, I just want to thank you right now as this great truth of examining myself, of how your body and your blood is doing a work into my life and I hope was in the lives of those who are hearing that we may be experienced the victory that is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We drink it, please. And this is the promise. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you will experience my death until I come. And I want to tell you, I have to eat and drink very often. But at least I have faith and I have a different hope than what I've had for years. May God bless you all. Amen.